Good day. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Douglas Harder, and in this topic we're going to discuss the division of complex numbers. So in this topic we will define the division of one complex number by another. We will derive this from multiplication and multiplicative inverses, and we will also of course look at it from a polar representation point of view. We will then see a geometric interpretation and observe some properties. Recall that given z is equal to alpha plus beta j or the magnitude of z phase theta, we have that the multiplicative inverse is given by this expression here, which can also be represented by z star over the magnitude squared, which is also equal to 1 over the magnitude of z phase negative theta. The division of one complex number by another may be written as any one of these, z over w, z divided by w, z over w, or z times w inverse. Now, you can actually just leave this as z times w inverse, explicitly calculate the reciprocal of w, and then multiply that, by, that result by z, but we are going to calculate the entire expression explicitly. We're going to use the final form to quickly find the formula. z times w inverse is z times w star over the magnitude of w squared. Well, that's just the product of z times w star over the magnitude of w squared. For example, to calculate the ratio of 1 plus 3j over 2 minus j, we have that we just multiply 1 plus 3j by the complex conjugate of 2 minus j, which is 2 plus j, and we divide that by the magnitude of the denominator, which happens to be 5. So the result is that expression, which equals negative 0 0.2 plus 1.4j. Let's look at the polar representation approach. If z is equal to its magnitude phase theta and w is its magnitude phase phi, then the product of z and w inverse is the expression on the right-hand side. But the inverse of w is given by 1 over the magnitude of w phase negative phi, and the product of two numbers in polar representation is just the product of the magnitudes and the sum of the angles. In this case, it's now the ratio of the magnitudes phase a difference of the angles. So for example, if we had 2 phase pi over 4 and we divide that by 0 0.4 phase 3 pi over 4, then we can calculate the ratio of the magnitudes and the difference of the angles. Now 2 over 0 0.4 is 5 and pi over 4 minus 3 pi over 4 is just negative pi over 2 and that should look familiar. Yes, negative pi over 2, that's negative j. So that's negative 5j. Let's check this out. Let's see if this ratio does actually equal negative 5j, but we're going to use the rectangular representation. All right, so 2 phase pi over 4 is root 2 plus root 2j, and 0 0.4, or 2 fifths phase 3 pi over 4 is negative root 2 over 5 plus root 2 over 5j. Now, before we calculate that, notice that we could divide both numerator and denominator by the square root of 2. That eliminates that square root of 2. Also, if we multiplied by 5 over 5, then that eliminates the 5 in the denominator of the denominator. So thus, that expression is equal to 5 times 1 plus j over negative 1 plus j. Well, that's just equal to 1 plus j times the conjugate of the denominator, all over 2. And working that out, we get that the real components cancel, and the imaginary components add to give negative 2. That cancels with a 2 in the denominator, 
so we are left with negative 5j. Next, let's look at the geometric interpretation of a ratio of two complex numbers. The magnitude of the ratio is just the ratio of the magnitudes, and the angle is the angle of the dividend minus the angle of the divisor. So here we see z and w, and we are calculating z over w. In this case, z is approximately 1.8 in magnitude, w is approximately 1.5 in magnitude, 1.8 over 1.5 is a lot closer to 1 in magnitude, and then we take the angle of z, but we subtract from that the angle of w, giving the result in the second quadrant. Theorem. The magnitude of ratio is the ratio of the magnitudes. We sort of already saw this with the polar representation, but we're going to derive it from the conjugate representation. All right, so the magnitude of z over w is the magnitude of the product z times the inverse of w. But wait a second, uh, the magnitude of a product is the product of the magnitudes. Great. But the magnitude of the inverse is 1 over the magnitude of w. So that's equal to that, which is equal to the magnitude of z over the magnitude of w. And we're done. Theorem. The multiplicative inverse of z over w is w over z. You sort of expect that from high school. So let's use the polar representation. If z is its magnitude phase theta and w is its magnitude phase phi, then z over w is the expression we see here. But therefore, the multiplicative inverse of that expression is the reciprocal of the ratio of the magnitudes phase the negated difference of the angles. But we can simplify that as just the magnitude of w over the magnitude of z phase phi minus theta. Oh, but wait a second. Um, that's just the product of magnitude of w phase phi multiplied by 1 over the magnitude of z phase negative theta. Oh, but wait a second. That's just w time divided by z. For example, here we have a ratio of two complex numbers, negative 0 0.9 plus 1.3j over 1.1 minus 0.2j. In this case, we're just going to use the complex conjugate to calculate that product. The product of the denominator is 1.25. The product of the numerator is negative 1.25 plus 1.25j. That simplifies to negative 1 plus j. Let's look at the reciprocal, 1.1 minus 0.2j over negative 0.9 plus 1.3j ends up being negative 1.5 minus 1.5j over 2.5 or negative 0.5 minus 0.5j. And notice that if we multiply negative 1 plus j times 0. negative 0.5 minus 0.5j, we get 1, so yes, the second is the multiplicative, multiplicative inverse of the first. So in this topic, we've introduced the division of complex numbers. We've used two approaches, the complex conjugate representation and the polar representation. We saw the geometric interpretation, where the magnitude is the ratio of the two magnitudes, and the angle is a difference of the angles and we looked at two properties. Here are some references, acknowledgments, the colophon, and a disclaimer. Cheers!